I want to welcome everyone to the World Outlook Conference, but what I'm really doing is welcome you to the age of consequences. Maybe it's the age of obvious consequences, because the consequences were always there, but today it seems more obvious than ever. I mean, Canadian dollar drops from 86 cents in January. We're right through the end of the month, we hit the 78 cent mark today. That gets people's attention. The price of oil drops from 60 or 68 percent from its high. We got the price of iron ore plummeting 63 percent, right along with zinc. That gets more people's attention. But these are symptoms of a much bigger challenge, much bigger problems. You know, I mentioned on the air earlier this year that I find myself getting more aggressive in my comments because the stakes are so high. But that makes some people uneasy, especially those people who kind of think politics first. And yeah, I know firsthand when it comes to politics, some people have absolutely like no sense of humor. I told a little story the other day. It wasn't a big joke or anything, but my goodness, you should have seen the mail. I was talking about the time when Thomas Mulcair, Stephen Harper, and Justin Trudeau were going to, they got on one of those planes to go uh, just hop from Toronto into Oakville. And they're sitting there, and all of a sudden, Mr. Harper rolls down the window, and he tossed out a $100 bill. Everybody looks at him and says, what the hell are you doing? He says, I'm making somebody happy. At which point, uh, Justin Trudeau said, oh yeah? So he tosses out 10 $100 bills. And he says, I'm making 10 people happy. At which point, Thomas Mulcair says, oh yeah? And he tosses out 100 $100 bills. He says, I'm making 100 people happy. At which point, the pilot says, oh my God, listen to these guys. I toss all three of them out and I'll make everybody happy. <laughs> Well, I got in trouble for that, which does remind me, by the way, when I speak, I usually piss people off. I don't want to, I don't want them mad at me, but past experience tells me that some of you will be. I also know that some of you here will disagree with what I have to say, but I want you to know right up front, I have no problem with you being wrong. <laughs> but I mean, come on, most of the world is pissed off right now. I mean. We got more trouble in Ukraine. The media isn't really picking it up, but there's real tension going on there right now. Obviously, you got ISIS, anti-Islam protests in Germany. I mean, everywhere you look, people are pissed off. But change does that. And we are living in an era of unprecedented change. Look around at what's happening. I mean, do you see today, Greek uh, three-year bonds went up over 19%. That's just today. My personal favorite, of course, happened two weeks ago today when the Swiss franc moved 24% in two minutes. Just think about that. Like that Canadian dollars right now, we get above par and it took two minutes of trading to do that. A week ago Monday, the Shanghai index dropped 8%. Chinese growth is the worst it's been in 24 years. And Europe, well, I'm not even allowed to talk about Europe right now. Everywhere you look, we see consequences of, listening, of really ourselves listening to economic incompetent of failing to understand the difference between wishful thinking of politics and the reality of economics. The difference between the world of political BS and the arithmetic of finance. It's slowly dawning on some people that politics is the problem, not the solution. And of course, I know there's people who take great offense to that statement. They put their faith in government. They have their political favorites. Well, I'll tell you, that faith is about to be punished. It already is being punished in Greece, in Spain, Portugal, Russia. So much more to come. By the way, I was interested, one of the most hopeful things I've seen in the last while was a survey I read this week uh, by Reason Roop. 2,000 Americans between the ages of 18 and 29, and it found that 66% of millennials believe government is inefficient and wasteful. And that's a huge increase just in the last three, four years. And I thought that was very positive. You got over two-thirds of them thinking that government acts on behalf of special interests and not only 18% thought they acted in the public interest. I thought that was very promising. No wonder David Letterman's got a little joke and it plays so well. He says, what's the difference between Obama's cabinet and a penitentiary? One is filled with tax evaders, blackmailers, and threats to society. The other is housing prisoners. But we have a continuing shift, it's really important to understand, a continuing shift toward government is an incredibly important change and it's driving the investment markets. The major moves in the investment are going to be de uh, delivered by this shift in confidence in government and into the private sector. And it, 
uh, ends confidence or gives me more confidence into the whole thesis that I have, which is we're witnessing the demise of the welfare state. Well, my goal is to shake people up, to get them out of that belief that it's business as usual. And despite the incredible evidence everywhere, the way we discuss the issues of the day, from poverty, unemployment, taxation, it all continues to be a business as usual framework. I think I mentioned that Russia dropped its interest rates last night from 17 to 15 percent. We've got 14 countries, including Canada, have had a surprise drop in rates in the last month. The Danish had their third last night, giving them negative interest rates. But we got negative interest rates in a half dozen European nations. That means give the government your money and they promise to give you back less. I actually thought they were already doing that, but and they promise to give you back less. Now, who do you think that's a good deal for? Because I'll tell you, you think that's a good idea, I'll take all the money you can get and I'll give you less back in a little while. But we're going to see these massive spike moves. They're the norm in every market as capital sort of sloshes back and forth. And in case you're, you know, people here will have varying levels of uh, experience in the investment market. So I'll just show you. I hope you can see these glasses here. This is how it works. It's this simple. Somebody asks me, Hey, what's the U.S. dollar going to do? What's gold going to do? What are stocks going to do? All they're asking me is money coming in or out of that particular investment or currency. So here I'm Europe, here I'm the U.S., money gets out of Europe, the level of the euro goes down, the level of the U.S. goes up. It's that straightforward. That's all we're talking about here. So we see a different uh, policy or a different event takes place. We're just saying hey, is money moving in or out? So quick question. People have been confused by the rise in their U.S. dollar, something that we've been recommending on Money Talks to get in U.S. dollars for two and a half years. So you have the problems in the Ukraine. Do you think that encourages money in Europe to stay or encourages it to leave? Well, clearly it got money leaving. It got money leaving out of Russia. And that's what happens. So the rise in things. Great Britain's been a big recipient of money coming out of Russia. $64 billion in the first six months. That's why the real estate market's so hot at the upper end. But that's the concept you have to get. And that's what we're talking about here this weekend. I love Woody Allen's quote. He says, more than any other time in history, mankind faces a crossroads. One path leads to despair and utter hopelessness. The other to total extinction. Let us pray we have the wisdom to choose correctly. <laughs> this is the age of consequences. And we're already seeing massive winners and losers. We're trying to make you in that ladder camp. We want you to be winners. Later on tonight, you're going to hear Martin Armstrong give an update on his shockingly accurate cycle of war and the sovereign debt crisis. In a while, short while, I'm going to invite Mark Leibovit to the stage. Timer's Digest, both long-term, short-term, timer of the year. Tomorrow we got Ryan Irvine's going to introduce again his World Outlook small cap portfolio. Ozzy Jurek's going to build on his terrific track record on investment real estate. Joseph Schachter, one of the few analysts who got the decline in oil right at this conference last year, he said, sell your oil stocks. I'm going to be interested to hear what he's got to say now. And speaking of changes, I'm really excited about tomorrow. We're doing something called to invest tech and we're featuring a group of technology companies three really good speakers and, and experts Eamon Piercy, Brent Holiday, Patrick Cox I'm going to show you demonstrations and what the investment opportunities are it is not option it's not an option any longer to be technologically illiterate I also want to invite you to take advantage of our personal finance workshops but go and talk to the huge array of professionals here and analysts. We've got Victor Adair here with the Money Talks group and Rob Levy, but all sorts of professionals. Go and ask them your questions. So let's get started. I am absolutely thrilled to have Lance Roberts here. Lance has flown in from Houston, Texas uh, to be with us here in Vancouver. He's that rare economist and financial analyst, by the way, who can actually speak. He's the author of the X Factor newsletter, STA Wealth Management and has a very popular radio show in Houston, so he's got to be pretty smart to have a radio show. But more importantly, his insights in the economy and markets have proven invaluable to the thousands of people who listen to and read his work. So I want you to 
give a very warm Vancouver Money Talks welcome to first-time visitor to Vancouver and the World Outlook Conference, Lance Roberts. Lance. <laughs>